I will address you as fellow brothers and sisters in humanity. The letter or the message of our chairman reads as follows. Dear brethren, today is the memorial day of St. Peter Clave, who helped thousands of African slaves at the port of Cartagena in Colombia in the 17th century. It is quite opportune that we have chosen this day to gather here at this independence ground to offer our supplications for the victims of human trafficking to encourage the government, religious leaders, groups and individuals that assist them to plead for proactive actions against the vice and to appeal for the conversion of the perpetrators involved in this heinous crime. It is a tragedy that in this century, notwithstanding the progress in human development and civilization, human beings still use and exchange their fellow humans for monetary gains through organ harvesting, cheap labor, sexual exploitation, as if they were chattels to be bought and paid for. It is dehumanizing and cruel like in the old form of slavery. The victim is manipulated to think that life is better on that side, but once let into the power and control of the trafficker, the victim has no choice but to surrender to the dictates of the master or mistress. In our century, we have not fared so well against this scourge. Children as young as seven years are exploited in forced labor, mining, begging, herding, agriculture, and so on. Girls and boys are also exploited in prostitution. Karmoja women and the children are particularly vulnerable to the domestic servitude commercial sexual exploitation, and street begging. Young girls and women are targeted for domestic self-sex tra uh, trafficking. Most victims of internal trafficking are Ugandans. Young boys and girls are the most vulnerable to internal vulnerable to transnational trafficking, usually seeking employment as domestic workers in the Middle East and other countries. These victims are our brothers and sisters whom we know and do not know. Moreover, in most cases, the traffickers are people who are known to the victims, relatives, friends, or associates. Remember how in the Bible, the older brothers sold their young brother Joseph as a slave. And he was enslaved in Egypt. You read that from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 12 to 36. There is no true religious leader who would fail to denounce the horror of human trafficking taking place in our country, affecting our people, and undermining their dignity and rights. 
There's no doubt that the idolatry of wealth and riches significantly contribute to this inhuman trade which attracts huge sums of illicit profits. This is further complicated by the rampant unemployment, poverty, and our education system which produces job seekers instead of job creators. Our young ones who are in constant search for opportunities to work abroad and in the urban cities sometimes end up satisfying the demand for body organs, demand for cheap labor, and the demand for commercial sexual services. These multifaceted and underlying causes need to be addressed by all duty bearers to curb the high level of vulnerability among the citizens. Therefore, given the complexity of this evil trade, no single individual, organization, nor government can overcome the human trafficking that deprives our brothers and sisters their dignity and freedom. We should therefore join hands in the struggle against this evil at all levels of our society, starting from the individual, family, local, national, the international. Remember that Jesus Christ proclaimed the liberation of captives as we read in the Bible this morning. I conclude by re-echoing Pope Francis' lamentation. It is a disgrace that people are treated as objects, deceived, raped, often sold, many times for different purposes, and in the end, killed, or in a, any case, physically and mentally damaged ending up thrown away, abandoned. But it should be, or it would be, a more terrible disgrace if we who hear or read about the fate of victims could only think of ourselves lucky that we have been spared from such fate, but feel no compulsion to share or mitigate the suffering of the victims, or wish to curb it. This is quoted from a magazine written, uh, the article was quoted by Carl Glatz, Catholic News Service, December 12, 2013. The chairman ends by saying, may God bless you all. Signed, Right Reverend Joseph Anthony Ziwa, chairman of Uganda Episcopal Conference and Bishop of Kinda Mitiana Diocese. The one who has read this message is Archbishop John Baptist Odama of Gulu Archdiocese. Thank you for your attention.